In this beautiful day of God's creation, God's beautiful and faithful people gather together in this beautiful uh, sanctuary. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Aaron Hyung Kyu Yi, pastor of uh, this church. And in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, I welcome all of you. Welcome to Belmont Watertown United Methodist Church, and welcome to God's house, and welcome to 2024 Homecoming Sunday. So now I invite you to stand, uh, greet one another. Uh, you have choice, your own words to greeting. greeting. Good morning, uh, or welcome home, welcome back, or you are so beautiful, you are so handsome. Okay, let us greet each other. As we gather together, the Holy, gather together the Holy Spirit, be with us and fill our hearts with joy and excitement. So now I invite you to stand for our morning call to worship. Rejoice, seekers of wisdom and truth. God's wisdom calls us here. Behold, followers of godly direction and guidance. Christ's love shows us the way. Sing, children of thanksgiving and praise. The Spirit's presence gathers us together. Please remain standing for our opening hymn, The Church's One Foundation, found on the screen or in your pew, pew hymnal, 545. <laughs>
please join together in our morning prayer. It is always good to go home, O God. We are grateful that our final home is in you. But in the meantime, it is wonderful to return to our earthly roots and to celebrate the feeling of joy and familiarity with the people, the memories, and the old songs. Give us an assurance that our fellowship in you can never be broken. Let the Spirit of Christ reign in our ears today and make us glad together. Let your name be glorified in the renewal we experience. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite you all, uh, kids and teens, to come forward. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. Ah, it is not good morning. Good, good morning? Good morning? Yeah, that is better now. OK, I'm so glad to hear. It's the first time that I met so uh, many kids and youth uh, today and on Sunday in Sanctuary. OK, today I want to launch a new ministry. Uh, this is an empty big bank. All right, uh, from this Sunday all the way through probably next Sunday, we will collect a coin, kids' offerings. Do you know why? God loves that God's people bring small tokens as the expression of their grat gratitude and thankfulness. So every Sunday, you can bring one uh, quarter or one dollar from your parents if you do good work, your allowance, and then collect uh, here every Sunday. And then when you, this piggy bank will be filled, then we can support uh, a heifer project. That would be, don't you think it is a good idea? It's great ministry. Okay, everyone takes one uh, quarter now, today. Okay. Yeah. Um, Erica, would you help? Yeah, would you help? Uh... Yeah. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Do you want me to go ahead and let Yes, in? yes. Okay, good. Okay, any changes? Dime, nickel, a quarter, and up to one dollar bill or one dollar coins you can allow to bring every Sunday. Okay? Forget to bring a coin that is fine. Okay, number two. I bought this uh, beautiful church in Portland. I got this from a uh, garage sale. <laughs> I love uh, visiting garage sale. And I think I paid $1 or $1.50. That is great uh, to explain, to teach that to lead the children's time. Okay, this is a church. And what a difference if I put uh, the small candles. Inside of the church. Ah, what difference do you see? Any idea? It's pretty, yes, it's more beautiful. You can see inside of the building, and it's just, uh, when the, the dark is, we can see the more um, church buildings, uh, brighter and clear. Okay, why the pastor show this church? 
The church should be Church, church should have the light inside the building. Okay. Two teens. What do you mean by that the church, the light inside the church? Do you think that that doesn't mean that we leave the whole building light on everywhere, the all overnight, all, all <laughs> during the weekdays? No. The church with the light inside means, number one, we have to open our church doors and our minds and hearts to welcome everyone. Okay, number two. The church is um, for worship and prayer and praises. And these three are the primary uh, four things. And number three, the church with the light inside means elderly members and new visitors and youth and kids that you are running and making noise and playing and singing and dancing and learning and teaching all members of churches uh, are participating in the church ministry. That is the church where inside the light. So you are very precious gifts. Your presence is so important for our church ministry. Without you, we are only part. So I'm Really excited to see you every Sunday here at Sunday school, at children's, at kids and teens moment, and then Sunday school. All right? Can you promise it? Right. Thank you. Um, Mary Jo? It is time of sharing your joys and concerns and uh, prayers and celebrations. Please lift up your heart to the Lord as you share with our church family. No joy? No celebrations? <laughs> yes, kids? <laughs> A joy to uh, to start a new school and the kids and a new uh, beginning in September. Yes. Welcome back, uh, Lee Carpenter, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's my great joy to welcome uh, my uh, old friends and uh, uh, colleague clergy and the former, four former uh, minister of this church and former DS, uh, Wee Chang and Yu Yeon, uh, they are worshiping with us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous as uh, <laughs> um, my former yeah, men mentor, mentoring uh, sitting here in Orange Meadows. And another friend, uh, um, Diane uh, Na, uh, is uh, worshiping with us. She is from my home church in Korea. Yes, yeah, some of. <laughs> uh, some. Some story in my sermon is related to uh, my home church, is not related to you. Uh, welcome, I'm so glad you are here. 
Let us bring our spirits uh, into the presence of the Holy Spirit. So bring uh, your being into God's presence. Let us pray. Do you need me? I am there. You cannot see me, yet I am the light you see by. You cannot hear me, yet I speak through your voice. You cannot feel me, yet I am the power at work in your hands. I am at work, though you do not understand my ways. I am at work, though you do not recognize my works. I am not strange visions. I am not mysteries. Only in absolute stillness beyond the self, you can know me as I am, and then but as a feeling and of faith. Yet I am there, yet I am here, yet I answer. When you need me, I am there, even if you deny me. I am there. Even when you feel most alone, I am there. Even in your fears, I am there. Even in you, your pain, I am there. I am there when you pray and when you do not pray. Though your faith in me is unsure, my faith in you never wavers. Because I know you, because I love you. Beloved, I am there. Let us respond with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this, this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us offer our tithes and our offerings, our, our love for God's kingdom.
dedication together. Through these gifts and offerings, bless your word, O God. Through our lives and our actions, bring love to your creation, that all may know your presence and live in your grace. Amen. This morning's lesson is from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 22 to 24 and 28 to 29. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful, and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. ago, I got a phone call from Brown and Hickey Funeral Home. And the funeral director uh, informed me of the death of Roy at Greenland. As I prepared for his funeral, I was empty-headed. I had no idea what to say at the service. I have been only two months, and I couldn't find any information of his membership or leadership at uh, Belmont Watertown UMC. And church members barely remembered him. When I met his two daughters, however, Karen and Darlene gave me, gave me one insight. As they entered the main church door on the common street side, they said, 
they said, I remember this hallway. We used to come to this church about 50 years ago. Nothing changed. Everything seems to be the same. In the parlor, they immediately recognized the two legendary ministers on the wall. And then I heard a precious testimony of his uh, niece at the funeral service. When she asked Roy what she would do for him, he answered, I want to have my funeral service at Belmont United Methodist Church. I did not know whether he used to be a leader or a committee chair. One thing I knew was that he regularly attended our Sunday service. And he was a faithful worshiper. I was moved by his last wish. For 13 years, he had lived in Milford, Massachusetts, and so he could not attend our Sunday worship. Nevertheless, he had longed for a return to his church once he dies. The service was beautiful and very meaningful, not only for his family, but also for me. It made me ponder the importance of home church. Home is a special place for almost everyone. Home is the place for eating and drinking and for rest and sleep. Home is also the central locus of love and care, laugh and support, and teaching and learning. Children start life at home and begin to accumulate memories. At home, they learn values and virtues, manners and attitudes, ways of communications and uh, compromise through relationship. People also learn at home how to live together, how to love each other, how to understand others. Home creates a safe environment in which members are homing and freely talking, share thoughts and opinions, exchange feelings and daily happenings. There is no place like a home. In spite of occasional disagreement, disagreements and confrontations, fighting and yelling, home is surely the place of forgiveness and forgetfulness and dream and hope of life. Now we can understand why people call the homeless rather than houseless. Having no place to live is surely a problem. Yet, Having no place where a person feels a sense of belonging is some more serious, I believe. For it concerns with human soul and spirit. Shelter is a physical well-being, while home is more related to mental health, security, identity, and emotional well-being. If then, where is the residence of a human soul? The church is home of a Christian soul and spirit. The church is the home of God's people. The church exists for our spiritual well-being, peace, comfort, courage, and care, love, motivation, and vision. In this sense, the church inspires us to shape the meaning and the purpose of Christian life. How it is possible? What makes all this happen? Yes, God's spirit makes it possible. The church is the spiritual shelter that God, God founded. 
in which God's Spirit welcomes all God's people. People feel God's presence at the church, in the sanctuary, or in the building, and experience God's love and care. Through those experiences, the individual believers grow in faith and trust. I'm very pleased with all your presence today in celebration of 2024 Homecoming Sunday. I feel as if this morning's service is my first worship at Belmont, Watertown, UMC, or the installation service. As many church members and kids or teens are present today, and my old friends worship with us. I'm very grateful that my good old friends living in Boston area join us in our worship. And uh, new, uh, new visitors, young couple, Colin and Abigail, sang in our choir. What a great joy it is to welcome families and friends, old and new members. From east and west, from south and north, from far and near, gathered in this place and share the communion. The first, the 21st century people is, in my opinion, a spiritually homeless generation. Many young people do not go to the church or do not seek a home church. They believe that they do not need a spiritual home. The present moment and the life in this world seem to be their primary focus. In the past May, I went to Korea for the 70th anniversary of anniversary concert of my home church. My father has been the member of the church for 60 plus years, and I grew up in the church. I had attended the Sunday school, vacation Bible school, and youth group until I went to college. I cannot imagine my childhood and youth without church life. And I felt we were like our family. May's concert was my first organ performance in my home church as well as in Korea. On that night, I met a couple of old friends from the youth group for the first time, almost after 40 years. I was extremely delighted to see all of them, many of them. Yet I heard a sad news that most of them are no longer churchgoers. They are lost sheep. Some of them said they entered the sanctuary for the first time after they had left the church. As a pastor, I spoke to myself. They have become homeless Christians. This morning, we read a paragraph from the book of Hebrews. God says to us, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly to the church of the firstborn. This verse describes the grand eschatological uh, image of God's dwelling place in heaven. In the New Testament, Zion, the city of God, and Jerusalem are in ex exchangeable terms as they all allude to the destination of the pilgrim Christians the location of God's presence in heaven. In the previous paragraph from verse 18 through 21, the writer of the Hebrews speaks of Mount Sinai where uh, Moses was trembling with fear. But the verse 
22 changes its tone and language. Mount Zion filled with thousands of angels is the place of joy. The Hebrew writers compare the mountain of Tyre, mountain Sinai, with the mountain Zion, the mountain of joy. Then verse 28 refers to the essence of their difference. While the earthly, earthly mount is shakable, the heavenly one is unshakable. And we are inheritors of the letter, the unshakable mount. You have come to God, to Jesus, so you are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Yes, it is true. We all are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We are Christians who are promised to inherit the eternal home. The final verse is intriguing. Our God is a consuming fire. Hmm. In the Bible, fire is often associated with God's uh, judgment. Most biblical scholars argue that the image of a consuming fire is uh, re related to chapter 10 of Hebrews, which speaks much of punishment and judgment. But I have a different interpretation. God as a consuming fire is a positive, constructive, and even transformative. Do you know why I think so? God's fire burns our emotional drags and the negative experiences and uncured scars. Because God wants all God's people to enter the unshakable eternal home. Two disciples right after Easter, when they walked to Emmaus, the God made their hearts burning. And John Wesley experienced a similar presence, the burning heart. For that pu purpose, God sets human hearts on fire and make them pure so that all believers, we all finally may possess the never faltering shelter. Welcome home. I'm so happy that you are here today. God's promise of the unshakable home is yours as long as you love the church and as long as you worship God. You can be one of many heavenly angels in joyful assembly of heaven. And you are on the right Paths that will take you home to the place where you belong to. Mount Zion, the city of God, the new Jerusalem. Blessed are you who find a spiritual home, who love this home, and who long for the home that can never be shaken. Amen. Please turn the face we sing number 2257 or using screen. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and glory. 
It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, the creator of heaven and earth, great and true God. You have given innumerable gifts to the human family. You have given us life and the experience of living. You have given us a creation as a testimony to your power, faithfulness, and creativity. You have given us a reason, logic, and a conscience. You have given capacity for love and self-awareness and the universal spiritual urge. You have given us a purpose and work. So we join with all creation of a proclaim our great thanksgiving to you, singing. Christ, who taught his disciples to listen for his voice and to follow him, even when all hope seemed lost. On the night before he was arrested, Jesus took a bread and gave thanks to God and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body, the bread of life the bread of love that will be broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks to God and blessed it and gave it to his, to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, the new covenant, the cup of joy that will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, in, in remembrance of me, remember of me. And so, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is real, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine that they may nourish our souls and transform our hearts and our minds. Shower us with your Holy Spirit that we may become the body and blood of Christ, the people of a new creation, and the healthy branches of Christ. Strengthen us in the power of your Holy Spirit that we may live in Christ and be in us, be he in us, for the healing of the broken and hurting world. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in a final victory and we feast as a, at the heavenly banquet. Through Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. 
for you. Come and come to the table. All are welcome. Come and eat and drink the bread of life, the cup of joy. Come, partake of a holy fellowship. Would you pray with me? We give you thanks for this feast of life, O oh God. We are fed by your grace, and we are strengthened by your love. And we are sent first into this world to live into the visions that you have laid on our hearts. Thanks be to God. Amen. So please stand for our closing hymn, number 733.
go first into the world, keep seeking and loving the home, church, and the eternal home. And then God will be with you. God will lead you to the eternal home that cannot never be shaken. Go now in this hope and excitement and promise and assurance. I send you out in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please join our coffee hour downstairs. Thank you.